Typically here on BPTV, welcome into another episode. We pride ourselves on an archive of installments that hold up, even stand the test of time. But our last episode, it didn't age well. Corey McCartney and Grant McCauley with you on the heels of a major plot twist in the search for the Atlanta Braves fifth starter. Ian Anderson and Bryce Elder were optioned to AAA and its prospects Dylan Dodd and Jared Schuster, who are the top candidates to fill the role. Grant, on a scale of shocked to shocked, where do you stand? I guess if we're going to put it on a, like a one to 10, I'm certainly surprised. I don't know if anything's shocking about players getting option to the minors in spring training. It's just kind of a part of life, the, the circle of life that is uh, building a pitching staff. But I didn't expect it as early, but there may have been some procedural reasons for that, which I'm sure we'll touch on in order to option someone out. And then you've got to have them down for a couple of weeks to bring them back. And that sets them up for opening day. If this decision changes somewhat or the need arises where you need these guys back. But I think as much as or more than anything, it shows you they are interested in taking the best 26 North. So we got a lot to dive into here about the why behind all of this. And then, of course, who is going to be the Braves fifth starter? Yeah, one of the two 24-year-old left-handers, Schuster, the system's top-ranked prospect, was at least on the radar behind Anderson, Elder, and Michael Soroka. But, but Dodd really is a stunner. I mean, he went into camp with one year of professional experience, albeit one where he had a 26% strikeout rate, and in yeah. Grapefruit League play has fanned 11 over his first eight and a third innings this spring. No walks, no runs. Schuster, meanwhile, a 104 ERA, a .35 whip, nine strikeouts in eight and two-thirds. Certainly, Soroka's hamstring string injury played his part in this but it's a very intriguing approach you mentioned it because there was always going to be the convenient line of thinking that if it's Anderson you know that he has that track record even if he has a 614 ERA this spring he has as many walk as walks as he has strikeouts if it was elder he obviously he had success late last season even if he had a 617 ERA this spring but the Braves bucked every prediction and every expectation Grant I'm trying to think of the real time, uh, the, the last spring training stunner like this. Maybe Annabelle Sanchez inexplicably making the rotation out of nowhere in 2018 is a late depth signing. Uh, but you mentioned, I mean, obviously there are procedural things where we could be bringing back these guys, uh, Anderson, Elder. But just from the end that we're talking about Dodd and Schuster at this point, it, it's really hard to try to find the last time where something stood out to this degree. I'll tell you the last time I remember it, and I've talked about this some on 92.9 this past week, is if you look back to the 2019 opening day uh, rotation, Michael Soroka was dealing with an injury. I think it was more of a, a shoulder thing, a weightlifting deal that kind of had him behind a couple of weeks. So both Kyle Wright and Bryce Wilson made the starting rotation that year. Now, they didn't stick around for an incredibly long time. So I'm hoping that if either Jared Schuster or Dylan Dodd if they make the starting rotation coming out of spring training, which it does appear that they are the most likely guys in camp to fight for that spot, that they'll stick around a little bit longer, have an opportunity to, you know, maybe really get themselves ensconced in that rotation. But putting all of that aside and, and kind of looking through some of the layers of the, how did we get here with Ian Anderson? It's to me, it's the walks more than anything. He walked eight and hit a batter in seven and a third innings. You add that into some hits, some home runs. I mean, it's not about looking at a spring training ERA and thinking, okay, well, this guy's just not pitching well. It's looking at how he's pitching and seeing what has changed since last year. And unfortunately, it just didn't look like to me, Corey, that a lot had changed. And I know it's a seven and a third innings is a super small sample size. And that's something we always need to underscore. But when you are competing for a job and there are three, four, five other names in that mix, those numbers are going to matter just a little bit. And that's something Ian Anderson certainly said. Coming out of each of his outings, he's very aware of that. Bryce Elder, it seemed like his outings were just very uneven. It would be a lot of damage really quick, and then he'd pitch maybe efficiently for a couple of innings, and things would look fine. But then you look at the final line and thought, he's not really knocking anybody's socks off either. And then all the while in the background, Jared Schuster and Dylan Dodd throwing strikes. They've walked one batter between the two of them. They're racking up strikeouts. They're not giving up very many hits. They're just coming out and attacking the strike zone. I think that's something that particularly for Anderson has been a big problem. Now, and looking at Michael Soroka, the hamstring injury that put him out to the side and, and off to the side on the sideline again, that's something that might be starting to clear up. And we could see him in exhibition play very soon. He could still have a role to play in this in the early part of the season as well. But two years we've been playing the waiting game with Michael Soroka. So I know for both you and I and a lot of Braves fans out there, we're going to believe it when we see it when he gets back. And hopefully it's going to become a win and not an if, and that could also change the complexion of all of this. But it has been a whole bunch of storylines swirling around to get to where we are. But if you do look at the numbers 
and you do look at the old-fashioned eye test of how these guys have pitched in spring training, I don't think it's surprising to see Dylan Dodd and Jared Schuster where they are. And as I looked at all of these guys just in a, in a vacuum of like, well, where in their careers are they? There's about 11 months difference between Dylan Dodd, Jared Schuster, Ian Anderson, Bryce Elder, and Michael Soroka as far as age is concerned. They're basically all 24, 25 years old. They're basically all the same age, but their careers have gone in all kinds of different directions, which is pretty fascinating as far as the fifth starter and all of the things that have got, brought us to where we are with a couple of weeks still to go. So if it's Dodd or Schuster, I think it's worth having this kind of big picture conversation when it comes to Anderson and Elder. Do I think that we've seen the last of them in Atlanta? Absolutely not. But think about this. You go back to the start of 2015 and the first year of the rebuild, and obviously the mission of John Coppola, John Hart, and that regime was simple. Acquire all the pitching that you could, ways of it, as they would say, and let the talent sort itself out. So from the start of the rebuild until the first of this NL East streak in 2018, you had the likes of Colby Allard, Ian Anderson, Aaron Blair, Tucker Davidson, Mike fulton Max Fried, Luis Gohara, Tyrell Jenkins, Kyle Muller, Sean Newcomb, Michael Soroka, Tuki Toussaint, Joey Wentz, Bryce Wilson, Kyle Right and Huascar Yanoa all enter the system, all hold spots within the top 10 of the prospect rankings at one time or another. And then the Braves are going to go into opening day 2023 with free to top the rotation, right coming off of a year in which he led the majors and wins. Everyone else on that list, they're either out of baseball, on another roster, or besieged by setbacks. Now, all of those arms were not going to hit, Grant. No one ever thought they were going to, but I think it definitely speaks to how insanely tough it is to find legit pitching, even when you put everything into acquiring it as much as you can. And that's why you have to acquire it, in quantity and quality. And I don't blame the Braves. I remember that spring training we came in, I think it was maybe 2017 or 2018 might have been the year where you just looked at how much pitching had been brought in and you looked around and like, well, that guy was a first rounder. That guy was a first rounder. That guy was a first rounder. There were so many first round draft picks. I mean, I think a couple of stories got written on that just because, I mean, and it went all the way back to having Scott Casimir in camp. I think that year he was a former first rounder, but it was just all over the place with the style of draft picks that the Braves had or the style of pitchers that they had and the different ages of all of them. And, you know, talking to some of them, you know, the injuries and you know, setbacks and you just the attrition that goes with the pitching staff, they all took their toll. And some of these guys are not currently you know, able to pursue their dream in the Atlanta rotation or anywhere else. And that's unfortunate, but I think it does underscore how important it was when the Braves decided, Hey, we've got to figure out our pitching situation. So let's go out and get as much as we can. You know, maybe the Sean Newcomb for Andleton Simmons trade did not work out. You know, some of the other trades like getting Max free from the Padres, that one certainly looks pretty nice using some of the draft pick capital that they got to, you know, pick out some players and, and sign some players under slot in order to have a bigger and better draft class of pitchers lets you kind of turn some of those prospects into trade capital for later on. I mean, you used Cal Muller to get Sean Murphy. You used some other arms to get Matt Olson. Then those arms may not have stuck around the, the Braves organization quite as long as some of the others we're talking about. And some of them are going to bust and that is going to happen, but you were able to turn some different players into valuable assets along the way. And I think that is kind of part of this rebuild that worked so well for the Braves. It wasn't just coming up with one plan and never deviating from that plan and, if it didn't work in 2017, then we blow the whole thing up and try again. There was a long-term approach. And I think when Alex Antopoulos walked in and took this job and looked at that farm system, he had to, upon assessing it for a year, think we're in a pretty good position as far as assets are concerned, but the work is not done. And Atlanta's continued to develop arms, given opportunities out to some of these guys as they've earned them. And some guys like Max Fried and Kyle Wright and Michael Soroka before he was injured, they have really stepped up. They've taken it. Spencer Strider, I think, is the latest example of that. So, yeah, I mean, we could talk the rest of the day about Braves pitchers, Braves pitching prospects, guys that did pan out, guys that didn't pan out that maybe had more hype than the guys who ended up being a part of this Braves uh, rotation and this Braves pitching staff right now. It's been a fascinating ride to get where we are, but you look at five straight division titles, the World Series in 2021, a lot of homegrown arms that helped the Braves get there and accomplish all of that. Now, the Braves are still hoping that Soroka can have a run of good health and he's progressing, taking part in fielding drills. They're also hoping that Anderson can try to recapture that form that led to so much early postseason success for him. But the fifth starter all but coming down to Dylan Dodd versus Jared Schuster. Grant, what do we need to see over these guys over the next now less than two weeks to be a part of the rotation uh, come opening day? 
Yeah, I really think it's all about continuing to do what they've done to get to this point and controlling the controllables. That that was a phrase I heard a lot from a lot of different Braves pitchers when I was down there in spring training. And for a young pitcher trying to make an impression on a club, which clearly Dodd and Schuster have done to get to this point, to be in consideration for an opening day roster spot on a big league club, they just need to continue doing what they're doing. That's attacking the strike zone. Schuster has an incredible changeup. I think that's a pitch that could really help him navigate through major league lineups for Dodd. He's a great strike thrower, and I think that's something that's really worked to his advantage. You look at his strikeouts to walks in the minor leagues last year, it was incredibly impressive. But then you saw him up against a Dominican club that was loaded with really, really experienced big league hitters, second and third third time through that order. What's that going to look like? Are you going to be able to make those adjustments? Because you can't just throw strikes to throw strikes. you got to have a purpose behind all those pitches. I think Dylan Dodd knows that. And if he needed just a little bit of a, you know, a, a wake-up call or a reminder, hey, these big league hitters are going to be tough, that Dominican team, I think, gave him that. So, again, it's just going to be about continuing to refine and refine and refine, but sticking with what got you to this point. And for Anderson, for Elder, hopefully for Michael Soroka, these are not names that we're you know, calling for the last time. Over the course of a long season, you're not going to get through it with just five starting pitchers. It's just not going to happen. So I'm intrigued to see who the Braves choose to open the season, but I'm always intrigued to see what happens between now and the time that we start talking about that playoff rotation, which is also a lot of fun to talk about when it becomes the time to line that up. Well, we are getting that much closer to opening day and be sure to come along with us for the ride here on BP TV. So subscribe, turn on notifications and tell a friend until next time. I'm Corey McCartney. He's Grant McCauley and we'll see you soon. Braves country.